If you saw one of my previous videos about measuring peak pressure inside the cylinder using the spark plug, then you already know one of my goals. I want to make this little controller control timing in closed loop. That is, I want to have my peak pressure point at the best mechanical advantage for maximum torque. And I almost kind of sort of got it working. Ish. Voiding warranties, where we are bringing you yesterday's absolute state-of-the-art technology tomorrow. Now when I say I've got closed loop timing running-ish, there's a reason. I can measure the peak pressure point and I can do it relatively quickly and relatively accurately under some conditions. I haven't gotten it to the point where it will measure under all conditions and I don't know where that transition is, although I do know a couple things. When I average it out over a long period of time, I get a curve kind of like this with the peak pressure point right at 45 degrees. Everything's good. Now if I advance timing a little bit more, I end up with a curve that looks like this, with the peak pressure point further advanced. If I retard timing, it ends up looking like this, with the peak pressure point retarded. The problem is I have to average a lot of cycles to get that kind of a result, because the initial data looks kind of like this. And then I take it and I measure to which side of the peak pressure point it's at, and then I move where I think the peak pressure point is based on where I'm getting the high points on each individual set of data. It all works pretty well for now, but I'm still getting more data to make it work better. If I advance timing too far, the peak pressure point moves so far to the left on the curve that it stops reading accurately and it sees the timing is very retarded instead of very advanced. Let me show you. All right, the engine's running and peak pressure point is about 55 degrees, 50 degrees, somewhere in that range. Now, I turn on closed loop, it already has a 10 degree demand. And it drives my peak pressure point right to about 45 degrees and then it hovers around there. And note, because of the differences between cycles, it's not gonna ever be perfectly at 45 degrees and stable. But it works, for now. And I can even mess around with it some. Let's just retard timing a bit using the manual adjust. Four degrees. Oh, wrong one. All right, 10 degrees retarded and both leading and trailing and it's trying to advance the timing 10 degrees to make up for it. Everything's good. We can even go the other direction. And you can hear the engine change how it's running as this goes on. Okay, now I have about eight degrees, both leading and trailing. And the closed loop is retarding by just over 10 degrees. Everything makes sense. Everything works. Here's where it kind of leaves the rails. Okay, still looking good. It's still controlling. And there we go. Oh, almost. And I do this at idle because idle is the safest place to do crazy things that could damage your engine. If I did it under load, there'd be a lot more stresses in the engine. I could even cause detonation here without too much worry. All right, still working. And of course, it's not gonna do it because it's on camera. There we go. See that? Starts reading timing way too retarded when it's actually way too advanced. 
And let me drop it back into open loop so that's not putting as much timing in the engine. And everything is reading badly. That's the problem. The engine's actually liking this. The mass airflow's gone down. The peak pressure point being this advanced is actually better for economy, especially at low loads. But under high loads, this would be just detrimental. Engine pieces everywhere. Let me bring it back down. All right, now it's reading correctly again, give or take. So it needs some tweaking. There's a lot I got to do just to make this work right. But the concept is there. And even if I can't get this to work right in closed loop, there are still other things I can do with it. I can use it to retard timing, but not advance. I'm okay with that. Or, alternatively, I could use uh, it just to tell me where timing is compared to where it should be. And I could also use the knock sensor to retard timing. Still keeping the engine safe with both. I still would like to have closed loop working though. All right, guys, I know it's just a proof of concept right now, but this is at least showing potential. It's gonna need a lot of software updates, a lot of code changes in order to make this work, but it's in the right direction. If I can just work out a couple of the bugs, this could be awesome. Until then, if you like this video, please click like. If you wanna see more, click subscribe, and feel free to ask questions or make comments in the comments below, and I'll get back to you when I can. Until next time, keep on voiding warranties.